Good day, I'm Dr. T, and welcome to my lab. Today I'd like to talk about the wonderful and incredible Bunsen burner, a very useful tool that we as chemists use quite often. Uh, this is a fairly safe form of fire, so if you want to have a nice flame, say for a flame test, or other case where you need lots and lots of heat, this is an excellent choice for that. It's regularly controlled. Now, of course, it's still a big flame, so I don't want to just like go put my face over it. That would be ill-advised. You'll also notice that I happen to be wearing my cotton lab coat and cotton shirt today, where I normally wear nylon. That's because I'm working with fire. Uh, cotton will burn, but it doesn't tend to melt. So typically, when you are working with Bunsen burners, it is recommended that you wear natural fibers and be quite familiar with how to put yourself out. That, of course, if you are close to the safety shower, it, lots of water will put out fire very readily. Uh, alternatively, of course, there is stop, drop, and roll. Uh, make sure you know how to address any fire situations before you get to the point of actually, you know, turning on the Bunsen burner. Now, speaking of the Bunsen burner, let's talk about a few brief features. On your table will be the gas outlet or potentially on the wall, depending on your configuration. The uh, gas outlet should be considered your course adjustment. Typically speaking, I only use the gas outlet for two settings, off and on full. That said, you can do fine adjustment with those, I just don't recommend it. Instead, I recommend looking at your Bunsen burner. Now, there are several different styles, some of which are not technically Bunsen burners, but they are close enough. On the underside of the Bunsen burner, you will see a dial. Now, this particular uh, knob is attached to a needle in the underside of the Bunsen burner. As the needle raises up, it blocks the hole, and that hole is allowing gas to go through into the barrel of the Bunsen burner and you can actually take off the barrel in some models and you can see the top part of that hole, which is very unimpressive. Now, you will notice on the bottom of the barrel there are slits. Different models will have different styles of slits, but these will screw in just above the hole. As you screw it down, you will notice the slits getting blocked. Other models will have shutters that you rotate back and forth. And this is to control the amount of oxygen within your flame. The amount of oxygen, of course, is going to control the characteristics of your flame, which is something you definitely want to be taking a look at. And you'll notice in other parts of this video, I will be more in the dark in actually talking about the flame itself. Uh, so those are your primary controls for your Bunsen burner. Typically speaking, you don't really want to have it on something that's too awfully flammable. You don't want fire anywhere near it, ideally. But an interesting feature of the Bunsen burner is that the base will always remain relatively cool. So one, if you are on a, say, wood table, not one that is, you know, paper or something that would be dreadfully combustible, but something that would not like the heat, the Bunsen burner is almost certainly not going to cause any great damage. Uh, I do see videos online where you need to put a fireproof thing down. If your Bunsen burner is working properly, that will not be needed. If it's not working properly, throw it out and buy one that is. Uh, you will also notice there are some techniques where you literally hold the Bunsen burner while it is active from the bottom. In this case, you are literally using it as a blowtorch because that's basically what this is, a blowtorch. Okay, so we've got ourselves our Bunsen burner, uh, and then in the rest of this video, I will talk more about the flame and how to light this critter. Uh, tools you may wish to use for lighting will be individuals such as a striker. Strikers use a flint and steel, a small piece of flint. These are replaceable. Uh, quite often I have seen strikers with the poor flint rubbed away to oblivion. They unscrew and you put a new flint on. And then on the inside of the pan is going to be a rough piece of steel that the striker rubs against as you click it. If the striker is almost gone and for some reason you are not just replacing it, a recommendation is to push slightly upwards and over when you are doing this. But if you have a good fresh flint, then you can simply push across and sparks will be generated. Of course, not the only option. A good old fashioned match is of course a classic choice. So if you have a match, you'll turn the gas on, light the match and bring the flame from the bottom up towards the top. This way, you don't have an issue uh, with having the gas blowing out the flame if you try and put it down from the bottom. Also, don't hold the whole box while you're doing this, as you wouldn't want to light the whole box. Uh, if you are using the paper matches, those are typically put into the little container. You pinch and pull. I happen to have the uh, slightly nicer stick matches. Uh, also, another point, when it comes to these guys, when you are lighting them, 
turn the gas on and light them post haste. Don't let it just sit there on. You don't want to have gas just leaking out into the environment. That has a couple of issues. It's a greenhouse gas, but more importantly, it could also catch fire and you could have an explosion risk. So turn on the gas and then light it. Don't just let it sit there filling the room with uh, natural gas, which could, you know, be bad. Okay, so to turn this one on, First, I always want to have my ignition source ready. In this case, I'm going to have a striker head. Turn this off. Sorry for reaching right in front of the GoPro. And then I hover it over and I give it a strike. And in reality, this is a beautiful flame. It's a little on the large side, but still a pretty good flame. Now, I can adjust the size of the flame with the control on the bottom. This gives me my fine adjustment. So I might very well want a slightly smaller flame. And this gives me a nice small flame. Obviously, I could go bigger. Um, but once again, that's a little bit too big. That's a little bit of a safety hazard. So I'd like that a little smaller. Additionally, I can do things such as adjust the amount of oxygen. As I go for less of an oxygen, you'll notice I start getting kind of more of a, a lamp-like flame. The yellowness of this particular flame comes from soot. This is an incomplete combustion and as such, not really what I want to go for. Instead, I want more oxygen in this guy to have a better and more complete Flame. You'll notice when you have your flame, you have typically two flames, and this is usually where you want to get it to. You have an outer flame, which we call the cool flame. Now it is a flame, so it is not cool. And then you have the inner flame, which is a warmer flame. You'll also notice my glass stirring rod, this is a soda lime glass, uh, the sodium is causing uh, the interesting color here, uh, which that will be for another video. But the inner tip of the flame, right where I've got my glass stirring rod, that is the hottest part of the flame. So if I want to do high heat work, like working with melting glass, et cetera, I would utilize the tip of the uh, inner blue flame. Now, if I want to go a little cooler, let's say I'm using a crucible, I might go for the uh, top of the flame up where the stirring rod is currently. Of course, I might put something down a little bit further if I just want to get lots and lots of heat, not necessarily high temperature, just lots and lots of BTUs coming out. Now, I should point out something. My glass stirring rod has been in the flame. It doesn't necessarily look hot, but it is hot. So do be careful. Hot things don't necessarily look like hot things. One other point I'd like to make with respect to Bunsen burners, actually two points. For starters, when turning them off, the simplest way to turn them off is simply to go around to the side from the uh, table and simply turn the gas off at the table. That way, it's done. It's pretty good to go. The second point I'd like to make is that if you don't have a striker, you can still light it. So in this case, I'm going to get my box of matches. I am going to go ahead and turn the gas on. I am going to strike my match. I'm going to bring the match up from the underside and light it from the bottom. If I try and light it from the top, it is possible that the flow of gas, instead of being ignited, will be uh, putting out the light. And as such, that will not necessarily be the desirable event for you. So with that said, I hope you have enjoyed today's video, and I will see you in other videos. Have a wonderful day.